Do you use a screensaver for your computer? Manufacturers recommend that if you leave your computer on for extended periods of time, a screensaver is a good idea. And there are lots of screensavers available today, as many as there are varieties of calendars. In fact, you can make your own personal screensaver with photos of your closest friends and family. Maggie Gordon and Ricky Hart are both computer users, but they don't need a saver for their screen. They need one for their relationship. Ricky and I had been living together in Detroit for five years. We had our ups and downs like any couple, but lately I'd reached my breaking point. What? Nothing. I felt like I couldn't count on Ricky for anything. He just refused to grow up. The night before, I had made a special dinner to celebrate our fifth anniversary. He forgot all about it and went parting with his friends again. He had hurt me one time too many. Sure you want me to go? I can't live like this anymore, Ricky. I'm tired of waiting up and wondering where you are. If you're all right. I'm tired of the excuses. It's just no good anymore. I'm still in love with you, Maggie. I'm sorry, Ricky. I'm not in love with you anymore. Come back tomorrow and get the rest of my stuff. What I had once wanted was to marry Ricky and start a family, but he couldn't commit. After all the pain, I had come to the conclusion that it was better for both of us just to end it. back the next night to get the rest of his things, but I was gone. I didn't want to be there when he showed up. I couldn't face him again. I'd left him a note and an old picture of us on the kitchen table. To remind you of happier times. Goodbye. Goodbye, Maggie. I left Detroit shortly after my breakup with Ricky. There were just too many memories. I wanted to start over as far away as I could, so I moved to West Hollywood, California. I got a good job as a paralegal, and I made some new friends. But the distance couldn't erase the feelings I still had for Ricky. Come on, girl. Let's go out tonight and party a little. I don't really feel like going out tonight, Tasha. You never feel like going out. All you want to do is sit around your apartment and mope. It's like you're in mourning or something. Forget about that guy in Detroit. He's over. I can't. Girl, it's been six months. That's a long time. You've got to move on. What if Ricky was the love of my life and I just let him go? Come out with me tonight and you'll meet the next great love of your life. I met two great loves of my life just last week. I'm not you, Tasha. Look, I know you're hurting and I'm sorry. When you're ready to go back out into the world, let me know. I tried to move on, but I couldn't get Ricky out of my head. I even went out clubbing with Tasha one night. All I did was watch her dance and think about Ricky's face. He looked so sad the last time I saw him. Chloe. Hi, it's Maggie. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. No, I'm still in California. It's fabulous. Everything's great. I can't believe it's been a whole year. I was just wondering, did you ever bump into Ricky? No, I'm over him. I'm just, I was just wondering how he was doing. I called a couple more old friends in Detroit to see if any of them knew about Ricky. But no one had even seen him. He just seemed to drop out of sight. I decided to take some night classes and get back on track toward my law degree. Between my classes and my paralegal job, 
I depended on my laptop computer for just about everything. So when it crashed, I needed to get it fixed right away. It only took the repair shop a couple of days, but I was already way behind in my work. I didn't realize that in a few seconds, I was going to get the surprise of my life. What I saw when the computer booted up still gives me goosebumps today. It can't be. Where did that come from? It was the same picture I left behind for Ricky. But what was it doing on my laptop? I brought my computer back to the repair shop. I had to find out how this happened. You want to check over there? Come back when you have some real questions? Thank you. There. There it is. Okay. So, what's the problem? I want to know why that picture is on my laptop. Wait a minute. What's your name? Maggie Gordon. Oh, I've been waiting for you. There was a screw up. Some other dude got your laptop and you got his. Who, who's did I get? Some dude. He was in L.A. on business. Uh, I think he lives in Ventura County. Are you kidding, Ventura County? Listen, I think I know this guy. Can you give me his address? No, I can't. It's against store policy. Look, you don't understand. I used to live with this guy. I'm sorry. I could lose my job. I felt desperate, so I opened up to him. Please? Look, I used to be in love with this guy. I think I still am. Still in love with you too, Maggie. Ricky. I missed you so much. So I guess this means you don't need his address. Was this just a chance meeting of two former lovers? Or was there a higher power at work here? How else do you explain both people using the same computer repair shop, or the switching of the computers, or the old photo? Is this story of the computer that reunited a couple an open display of honesty? Or are we hiding behind a screen of deception? Next, you'll find out which of our stories are facts, which are fiction, when Beyond Belief returns.